Why, hello there. This is Mesa Boogie 2000. It's, um, what, what is it? It's November 15th, 2017. I'm making this video because um, I have now subscribers with no content. And uh, I find that very bizarre. I find that very, very bizarre. But um, I figured I'd make this little video here and um, kind of explain who I am. Now, very quickly, um, I used to have a channel here on YouTube under my actual name, which I'm not going to give you because I want to have some anonymous or anonymity or something like that. I want to remain a little anonymous. But I used to have a channel under my own name with close to 200 videos. All that I did, um, I had a preaching ministry here on YouTube. Uh, some of my sermons were well over an hour in length, covering topics from tithing, the charismatics, uh, Catholicism. I had a really good salvation uh, video. But um, I took down my old channel by my accord because of an attack that happened to me. Um, something that happened over 32 years ago, a sin from over 32 years ago, which I am forgiven for by the blood of Jesus Christ, came up and um, I panicked and I took down my channel with all the videos. So that's over and done with. But I wanted to make this little video here so you all can uh, at least know who it is that you're dealing with um, because I leave comments on other people's videos and you can see my subscriptions <coughs> excuse me I'm I'm a little sick but uh, you see that I've left comments on other people's videos and um, if people disagree with my comments I think it's very rude to get into these lengthy debates on other people's videos so if you got something to say to me or a disagreement you want to take up with me personally, here's the video. Here's where you can do it, okay? First of all, let me first say that I believe that this, the King James Bible, is the perfect, inerrant, inspired Word of God. There are no errors in this book. This is what I live by, the King James Bible by faith and practice. I believe this from this cover to this cover. I believe every word in this book. Now, I'm going to go through some scriptures here with you to kind of tell you what I believe, okay? So if you got a King James Bible, I suggest you go ahead and get it because I'm going to be Quoting directly from this, the King James Bible. Okay? First of all, like I told you, I believe that this is the perfect, inspired, inerrant Word of God. Reading from Psalm 12 in the King James Bible, verses 6 and 7. Beginning at verse 6 on to verse 7, Psalm 12. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Verse 7. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. What are What is the them there? The words of the Lord. You know, in uh, some of the modern translations, they take out them and say us. That, that you'll preserve us, not talking about the words. So right here in Psalm 12, you have a promise that God is going to preserve his word. I'm not going to mention the uh, reference of uh, God preserving his word in the book of Revelation because I don't need to. Okay, now, <clears throat> Second Timothy in the New Testament 
2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 14 on to 17 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 14 on to verse 17 okay beginning at verse 14 but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures Timothy had the Holy Scriptures way back then. Interesting, yes? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And very quickly, go, out, go to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 14 is uh, where we're going to be going really quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the scriptures themselves are giving witness that the scriptures themselves are inspired and inerrant and they're found here in the King James Bible the real Bible I'm also a dispensationalist I do not believe that the whole book is written for me as a Christian okay not at all there are divisions within scripture you have to rightly divide the word of truth okay for example when did the new testament begin it began with the death of the testator hebrews chapter 9 verses 15 through 18 you look that up yourself okay the new testament began with the death of the testator which brought in the church age which you and i are in okay Here's the best verse for dispensational teaching, okay? And all the new modern Bible versions take out a key word here in verse 15, all right? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to shew thyself approved unto God. They take out study in the new modern Bible versions. And it says, and they say something like, be diligent or work hard. But it's study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? I am dispensational. I believe that this is the perfect, inerrant, inspired word of God. There ain't no errors in this book. The only time you can find a contradiction in this book is when you do not rightly divide it. Okay? That's what I believe. And I believe that's what the scriptures, without any question, teaches. Now, <clears throat> let's go to Isaiah chapter 64. Uh, you know what? Uh, before we go to Isaiah chapter 64, Let's go back to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom 
I am chief. Whom I am chief. Verse 15 in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1. Conviction of sin. Are you a sinner? Verse 15 again. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Some of you might be thinking, well, hey, you know what? I do good things. I do really good things. I don't deserve to go to hell. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 64. What do, you th what do you think God thinks about all your works uh, and all your righteousnesses? Huh? What do you think God thinks about that? Well, let's read. Isaiah chapter 64, verses 4 on to verse 7, beginning at verse 4, okay? Verse 4 in Isaiah chapter 64. For since the beginning of the world men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Verse 5. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned, in those is continuance, and we shall be saved. Verse 6, now watch this. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Your righteousnesses, by all your good works, apart from saving faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, on the death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on the cross, <coughs> cleanses you and me from all sin. Verse 7. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, beginning at verse 10, on to verse 18, okay? Romans chapter 3, beginning at verse 10, on to verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. <coughs> the poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Verse 18 again. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Do you have the fear of God in you? <laughs> Modern churchianity, Alexandrian churchianity, teaches that we're not supposed to fear God. Oh, we are to fear God. We are to fear God quite explicitly. You know what I mean? So we see that, according to Scripture, there is none that doeth good, no, not one, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the sight of God. <gasps> what do we do? Acts chapter 20. One verse here. Acts 
Acts chapter 20, verse 21. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance is a changing of your mind, changing of your heart, and a turning from your self-righteousness onto God's imputed righteousness, which is in Christ Jesus. <coughs> repentance. Oh yes. I believe in repentance towards God and faith on our Lord Jesus Christ. That your mind changes, that you realize that you have sinned against a righteous, holy God, and that your righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and that all your good works and all that you could ever do is nothing. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Verses 9 through 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. Beginning at verse 9, Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Now watch this. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Any of you who say that Paul never preached repentance, I'm sorry, you don't know the book. Okay? What about salvation now? Hmm? The gospel. What is the gospel? Here's a very good synopsis of what the gospel is. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, <coughs> verses 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Beginning at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the Gospel right there. The death, burial, and resurrection and the blood shed on the cross by God manifest in the flesh, Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy chapter 3, uh, 16. Okay? The blood shed by Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. And you have to have faith on the finished work of Calvary in order to be saved. Okay? Now, what about salvation, huh? What about salvation? Romans chapter 10. Oops, went a little too far there. Excuse me. Romans chapter 10. You see that I believe that in um, repentance towards God and faith on our Lord Jesus Christ, you see that I believe that this, the King James Bible, is the perfect and errant inspired Word of God. You also have seen that I am a dispensationalist, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. This is salvation. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 on to 13. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 on to 13, beginning at verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith, which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, 
and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Call. You have to pray to be saved. You have to utter the words. For what saith it? <laughs> what saith it? For with the heart man believeth, this is verse 10, unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11 again. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen, amen, amen. <coughs> now once you are saved and born again, something happens. You get what is known as a new life. Now there are many scriptures we can go to on this, but uh, I'm going to read you for this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to 21, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Beginning at verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconcilia uh, reconciliation. Verse 19, To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Verse 21 it talks about the imputed righteousness of Christ. When you believe on the finished work of the cross of Calvary, the blood shed to cleanse you of all sin, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's one event. When you believe on that, when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ's righteousness is imputed unto you, the sinner, and you are saved. Okay? Do you get that? I hope you do. But see, once you are saved, the Holy Ghost comes into you and seals you. We're going to look at that very quickly, okay? You are sealed, meaning eternally secure, if you are truly saved and born again, okay? You don't first get saved like the care Catholics believe, and then try to seek the Holy Ghost to come on to you after you have already been saved. No, 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 no. Once you are truly saved and born again, the Holy Ghost comes into you upon salvation. And you are sealed. Okay? Okay? <clears throat> now, while in 2 Corinthians, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We are going to be reading verses 21 and 22. Okay? Eternally secure. Eternal security. I believe on, in eternal security, okay? Verses 21 and 22. In First Corinthians, chap, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ, and hath anointed us, is God, who hath also sealed us, and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. 
Oh boy. Okay. Now, for the best verses on eternal security, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye, he, that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. The pre-tribulation rapture, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes, I am 110% pre-tribulation. Okay, right there, verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance. What is our inheritance as believers? We're going up before the time of Jacob's trouble, the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay, we are sealed until the day of redemption. And our redemption is when we are called up to the Lord before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, that's what I believe. And that's what I believe the scriptures plainly teach. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Well, actually, let's read verses 28 on to verse 32, okay? 28 on to verse 32 in Ephesians chapter 4, okay? Beginning at verse 28. Here's more on the changed life. Let him that steal, uh, beginning at verse 28, let him that steal, steal no more. Excuse me. Let him that stole, steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, false teaching, lying, that kind of thing. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now watch this, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto, unto the day of redemption. When you are truly saved and born again, you're not going to lose your salvation. You can lose a whole bunch of other things, yes, but your salvation? Uh-uh. I don't believe that for one second. And you're not going to convince me otherwise. Thank you very much. Okay. <coughs> Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. What about faith? Huh? What about faith? You might be thinking, whoa, this mess of boogie guy hadn't said one thing about faith. Well, let's look at faith, shall we? You have to have faith in order to be saved. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 10. For by grace are ye saved, through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. For by grace are ye saved through faith. You have to believe and have faith on the finished work of of Calvary, the finished work of the cross, the blood shed on the cross <coughs> to a, that cleanses you from all sin, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's one event. You're believing on one thing. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now go back to Romans 
chapter 3, Like I said, this is just very basic so you can know what I believe and where I stand. Okay? That's all this is about. All right? Romans chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 28. Okay? Now we know that uh, this is Romans chapter 3, by the way, verses 19 on to verse 28. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. The Ten Commandments are the perfect, holy, just requirements of a perfect, sinless God which you or I at our best states could never keep. We've all broken the Ten Commandments. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. <clears throat> Would you have known it's wrong to covet unless it said, Thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt have no graven images? Hmm? Verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, again, giving testimony to the scriptures itself. But the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The grace of God. You hear Alexandrian Christians talking about the grace of God. The grace of God is in Christ Jesus. It's Christ Jesus himself. <coughs> Excuse me. God manifest in the flesh, died on the cross buried, rose again. He shed his blood to atone for your sins. That is the grace of God. Verse 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. You have to believe that the blood cleanses you from past, present, and future sins, friends. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? Is it, it is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Verse 28. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Let's keep reading, what shall we? Let's finish out the chapter. Verse 29. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision, the Jews, by faith, and uncircumcision through faith. Do we make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Well, that's pretty much it. Very basic. Like I said, this wasn't a sermon or anything of teaching. I just told you and showed you through Scripture, the King James Bible, where I, Messabuggy 2000, stand. And I am firm in my belief. I will not be shaken. I will not be brought uh, not to and fro. I am not a double-minded man. I will not change my position. If I'm going to change at all, you got to show me through scripture. But there again, like I said, I'm what you call a good, stubborn Christian. 
<coughs> you could also call me a Bible thumper. I'm not an Alexandrian Christian. I don't trust in scholars. I trust in the book. I trust in the book. And when you are saved and born again, the Holy Ghost is in you. You are sealed until the day of redemption. And the Holy Ghost will guide you into all truth. Okay? So, that's it. I don't know if I'm going to be making another video, but, you know, like I said, I got a couple of subscribers with no content. Here's some content for you. And if I lose you, my subscribers, oh well. But there again, like I said, I comment on other people's videos. So if I make a comment and you want to argue, which I don't like to argue with people, but if you got something you want to say to me or something you want to talk about, a comment I said, do it here on this video and not on other people's videos. I think that's just plain rude. Anyway, uh, what, 36 minutes. Uh, congratulations if you make it through this whole thing. I hope you have a wonderful day. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Shalom Alenka, my friends. Bye-bye.